A what is of mga B. So example number four na po tayo sa pagsusolve ng deflection in beams using the double integration method. Let's go! Alright, ayan. So kung makikita natin mga B's, no, here's the example na susolve natin. Ito yung beam, simply supported beam. And if you would notice, ah, uh, medyo an, hindi siya pareha sa mga previous examples natin kasi the first three examples were uh, uh, symmetrical sections. Symmetrical yung loading, symmetrical yung uh, supports, and geometrical properties in all. However, dito makikita natin unsymmetrical, di ba? So, uh, yung loading natin is not uh, the same. Or I mean, hindi siya symmetrical for, per se. Now, uh, let us try to look at the problem. Kasi mag-iiba mag yung approach natin kapag, ano eh, kapag hindi siya symmetrical. So, sabi dito, determine the maximum reflection of the simply supported beam. Diba sa ating mga previous examples, if you could remember or if nanggaling man kayo doon, nasabi natin that uh, for a simply supported beam na symmetrical yung loading and the supports and uh, the geometrical properties of the beam, uh, we could uh, simply say that the maximum reflection will occur at a mid-span sa eksaktong gitna mismo ng beam. However, if our uh, loading is unsymmetrical, katulad nga nito, hindi siya conclusive. Hindi, hindi yun mangyayari sa mid-span. However, one thing that you are certain about is that it is very near. Alam nyo na yung maximum deflection would occur very near dito sa mid-span. Okay? So, take that into consideration. So, solve natin mamaya yung location ng maximum deflection. And you would notice that malapit na malapit siya. As in, malapit is either sa banda rito or it's either sa banda rito ng sentro. Okay? So, let us prove that later. Now, uh, sa process ng pag-solve kapag unsymmetrical, well, it's simply the same, no? First, gagawin natin is to uh, write first the formula. Maganda yun para alam natin kung anong hinahanap natin. M over EI, di ba? Y double prime is equal to the moment equation over the flexural rigidity. So, your E and I are already given. No need to worry. However, we need to solve for M or the moment equation. And to do that, putulin muna natin yung ating beam. Saan natin puputulin? Yun yung bago sa dulo. Okay, so before siya, before sa dulo, putulin yun dun, that you should uh, consider all the loadings from the left side. Now, let us draw the free body diagram ng pinutol natin na yan. Ayun. And then, Meron tayo ditong uh, reaction, siyempre, no? That should have a reaction there. And, uh, yeah, solve natin pala yung reaction at RA. Sorry. Lapat muna pala yun. Okay, so, what is the reaction at RA? Let's name that RA. So, how do we solve for RA? We do summation moments. Summation moments at B, di ba? Para makancel yung B. And A na lang yung masolve. Tama. Summation of moments with respect to point B is equal to 0. We assume that clockwise moments are positive. Okay, so let's start. We have here the uh, reaction RA, which will have a uh, moment arm of 6 meters. Yun yung perpendicular distance niya. And then we have here, wait, yung RA, it will create clockwise moment. So tama, positive. And then we have here 30 kilo newton, which goes that way, kasi nga B yung pivot point, ibig sabihin, it will create a counterclockwise, so negative. Negative 30 times the moment arm, which is 4. And then ito, negative ren kasi counterclockwise. Moment arm niya, 2. Is equal to 0. So, solve na lang natin yung RA. Wait, saan yung calculator natin? Oops! Ayan. So, uh, ano, ha, uh, ano yan? Saan ako? RA. Okay, so RA is equal to, ito 120, magiging positive plus... 15 times 2 is 30 divided by 6. So, 150 divided by 6 is equal yan sa 25. Okay? 25. Ayan. So, the value of our RA is 25 kilonewtons. So, ito, we can write there 25 kilonewton. And then, meron tayo dito, tuloy na natin yung free body diagram, no? Meron tayo dito 30. Ayan. Tapos, meron tayo dito 15. Ayan kilonewton. And yung distances niyan, uh, gamit ako ng puti. Ayan. Yung distance, oops, ang kapal. Yung distances niyan would be ano to? Uh, tig to 2 meters lahat, no? 2 meters, 2 meters. Ayan. So, uh, finally, we said that this whole length would be x. Okay? So, yun yung napanood nyo yung mga previous videos natin. Yun yung ginagawa natin. Now, we are now ready to write the m or the moment equation. So, how to do that? We just uh, 
use the basic assumptions counterclockwise, negative, clockwise, positive. So, ito yung magiging pivot point natin, no? Dito ka iikot. Okay, so, uh, ito yung magiging uh, parang uh, pivot point natin. So, simulan natin dito, mga bis. So, 25 kN will create clockwise moment. So, 25 times, ano yung moment arm niya? X, di ba? And then, we continue. This 30 kN would create counterclockwise. O, ganun. So, negative. Ano yung pivot point niya? Pivot point niya to the moment arm, that would be X minus 2, di ba? Kasi yung buong ito ay X. Tapos, isubtract mo to X minus 2 para makuha mo yung moment arm. Ayan. So, that's X minus 2. And then, we continue. Uh, where tag 15 kN, that would be negative also kasi counterclockwise yung gagawin yung moment. So, minus 15 times the moment arm, it would be X, yung total na to, minus yung length na to, which is 4. So, X minus 4. Ayan, so this would be our moment equation, mga bis. Okay? Now, uh, we're now ready to do the double integration portion. So, sulat ko lang dito para, ayan, double integration na tayo. So, Rewriting the formula, since EI is constant, uh, lipat natin sa kabila, EI, Y double prime is equal to M. And that's the M, right? Yun. So, isulat na natin yung equation na to. It would be 25X minus 30, X minus 2, minus 15, X minus 4. Okay, so, let's do the first integration. Para yung Y double prime maging Y prime, you will have the slope equation. So, Integrate. We are integrating this in terms of dx, okay? Or, or, or that uh, variable x. So, continuing with that, uh, ito, magiging ei constant nga yan, y prime. Itong 25x, magiging 25x squared divided by 2. Kasi diba, nag-add lang tayo ng 1 sa exponent, and nilalagay natin sa baba yung bagong exponent. So, minus 30, uh, x minus 2. Itong x minus 2 mga bis, uh, ang exponent niya is 1. So, treat this... Uh, Terms in parentheses like a single x, no? Parang isang single variable siya. So, x, yung exponent dito is 1. So, 1 plus 1 is 2. Ayan. So, tapos, huwag kalimutan, ipilagay din natin sa denominator. Minus 15, same likewise dito. Squared, divided by 2. And don't forget, we'll add our first arbitrary constant. Okay, so that's our slope equation. Now, let's integrate it again to get the deflection equation because ito is slope 2, eh. Diba? So, integrate ulit natin. Again, in terms of x. So, ito, we have here, ei. Yung y prime magiging y na lang. So, ito, 25x squared. So, 2 plus 1, 3. And 2 times 3. Okay, minus. Ito, simplify ko na. 30 divided by 2 is 15. x minus 2, ito, squared, magiging 3 na yan. Over 3. Minus 15x minus 4. Ito, 2 plus 1, 3 ulit, divided by 2 times yung 3 na yan. Plus C1x, don't forget, plus C2. Naglagay tayo ng C2 kasi nag-second integration na tayo. Eh. So, another arbitrary constant. Now, before we can proceed to solve for the y, we need to determine the values of C1 and C2. ba So, what are our boundary conditions? Ibig sabihin, ano yung mga alam na natin? The values ng deflection or slope without solving anything yet. So, just observing the situation of the beam. So, makita natin mga bis, no? Okay, so with regards to the slope or the y prime, wala tayong alam na values in this total beam. ba? Unlike dito, for example, unlike dito sa uh, previous examples natin, alam natin that the slope at this is, uh, midpoint C is zero. Kasi nga, symmetrical siya. Uh, however, kung makita natin yung example natin dito, Hindi siya symmetrical, so we cannot assume that the slope at the midspan is zero. Also, likewise, ito kasi, a pin support at roller, hindi, hindi natin alam yung slope dyan. So basically, we don't have chances of using this equation to solve for C1. So therefore, let us focus dito sa pinakababa, the uh, deflection equation. Now, what do we know about the deflection y? We know that the deflection at supports is zero. So, di ba kasi kapag magdi-deflect yan, ito, Nag-deflect yan. Ayan. Ganyan lang siya. So, ibig sabihin itong point A at point B, hindi yan bababa. Okay? So, with that, we can say that at X, at X is equals to 0. Ito. Kasi ba yung X na ito parang nag-move yan. When your X is 0, you expect that your Y or the deflection is 0. Same likewise dito. When your X is equal to uh, uh, 6, ba? 2, 4, 6. 
your y is also equal to 0. So let's use these two uh, conditions to solve for c1 and c2. So unahin natin itong uh, 0, 0. So kapag nilagay natin yung 0 sa uh, y at 0 sa x, kung makikita nyo magka-cancel lahat, no? So solve natin yung c2. And kung na-solve na natin yung c2, gagamitin na rin natin yung ito. So we can solve for c1, di ba? Kasi... Uh, alam na natin yung C2. Okay, so let's start first at this uh, boundary condition. At x is equal to 0 and y is equal to 0. So let me dito. Okay? At x is equal to 0, your y or the reflection is equal to 0. So dito, ito yung gamitin natin, reflection equation. Okay, dito mga bis, that's EI times y, y is 0. So simply 0 lang yan. Ito, 25 times 0, so 0 rin lang. Minus, ito rin, 0 minus 2. Ilagay ko dito, ah. 15, 0, minus 2, over 3, minus uh, 15, 0 yung x natin, so 0, you know, 0, minus 4, cube over 2 times 3 is 6, plus c1, c1 ano yung z x natin, 0, plus c2. Okay, ito mga bis, kung makikita natin, uh, pwede natin nag-simplify and we will have a numerical answer. However, if you would remember, meron tayong rules dito na sinusundan sa ating uh, double integration method na kapag, yung, uh, na kapag yung result dito sa loob ng parentheses na to ay magiging negative, we will disregard that term. For example, ito, 0 minus 2 is negative 2. Ito, 0 minus 4 is negative 4. Okay, so kapag negative yung mga to mga bis, we need to disregard this whole term. Yung sa loob ng uh, parentheses na to kapag nag-negative yan, Dapat natin disregard. When x minus a is lesser than 0, we need to disregard this whole term. Parang i-assume na natin na it doesn't exist, no? So, bakit? Uh, why is that? It is uh, with uh, regards to Macaulay's method or Macaulay's principle. Search yun na lang for further explanations. Uh, yun yung rule na sinusundan natin dito. So, with that given, we can cancel this out. Cancel that out. Cancel that out. Although, di ba, kapag simplify natin to, magkakaroon yan ng value, eh. Pero nga, sinusundan natin na kapag x minus a is negative or lesser than 0, we cancel it out. Okay. So, kapag positive naman, no need to cancel out. Include natin, for example, ito, magiging positive 2 yan. Include nyo, 2 cube times 50 divided by 3. Include dito the equation. Pero negative ga So, tinagal natin. Okay. So, don't forget that. So, continuing ito, ito, <laughs> it, ito, c1 times 0 is 0 rin, so cancel that out. Therefore, we can say that C2 is equal to C2 is equal to 0, diba? Nag-cancel lahat. Okay, so okay, alam na natin yung uh, value ng C2 natin, guys. So, next, we use this boundary condition x6, y0 to solve for C1. Okay, so tignan natin. At x is equal to 6, the y is equal to 0. So, same pa rin, deflection equation gagamitin natin. We have here, uh, EI times Y, yung Y natin is 0. So, simply say 0. Tapos dito, may value na yung X natin. That's 25 times 6 cube over uh, 2 times 3 is 6 minus uh, 15. X natin is 6. 6 minus 2 is 4 cube over 3 minus 15. 6 minus 4 is 2 cube over 2 times 3 is 6 plus C1 and yung C, uh, X natin 6, di ba? Plus C2. Yung C2 natin, guys, the solve na natin na 0, so no need to include. Okay? Now, uh, if you would try to notice, di ba, yung nasa loob lang parenthesis nito is naging positive, so I included it. Hindi ko yan i-cancel kasi positive, okay? However, dito, negative nga, so kaya natin siya kinancel. Now, uh, balik tayo dito, kung makikita natin, C1 na lang yung uh, naiwan. So, grabe naman yung naiwan. C1 na lang yung natira. Ang sagin ng naiwan eh. C1 na lang yung natira, kaya, uh, yun, pwede natin siyang ship solve or solve natin yan. Makukuha natin yung value ng ating C1. Okay, so, so let's just input in our calculator, then ship solve tayo. We will have an our answer of negative 33.3. 3, 3, 3, and so on and so forth. Ayan. So, okay na yung C1 natin. Okay na yung C2 natin. So, uh, we can write now our deflection equation and slope equation properly. Okay? So, let's try to get back to the problem. What is the maximum deflection of the simply supported beam? 
di ba guys? Para masolve natin yung maximum deflection, we need first to solve saan ba yung location ng maximum deflection. Kasi if alam natin na sentro yung uh, location ng maximum deflection, then pwede nating palitan itong mga x ng 3 na to and then we can solve for y. Simple, di ba? Kasi alam na natin yung c1 and c2. Pero nga, hindi pa natin alam yung location ng maximum deflection. So, we need to solve first for that before we can know, before we can determine yung uh, value ng deflection. So, location muna bago yung deflection. So, how are we going to do that? Uh, remember guys, di ba? Nasabi natin noon that at maximum deflection, at maximum deflection, our slope is zero. So, how if, Dito sa ating slope equation, di ba itong C1 may value na tayo? How if we set that the value of y prime or di ba kasi yung y prime is also slope? How if we set that the value of this y prime is equal to 0 and then we solve for the value of x? Di ba? So that would be one way to solve the location of the maximum deflection. So dito at, uh, at uh, slope is equal to 0, we should find the value of x. Kasi x will show us the location. Saan ba yung location ng beam kung saan yung slope ay 0? So, yun yung gusto nating makuha dito because it will give us the uh, location also of the maximum deflection. So, ito, kopyahin ko lang tong uh, let's copy this uh, term. Ayan, lagay ko lang dito. Oops. Okay. Erase muna natin tong ayan mga integral sign. So, itong C1 natin, mga bis, di ba nakuha na natin yung value niyan? That's negative 93.33. Negative 93.33. So, we set our slope into 0 and then we solve for x. So, basically, ito magiging 0 na to eh. Kasi y prime or the slope is 0. And so, is equal to 0 na yan. So, with that, we can use this equation and then shift solve na lang tayo and solve for the value of x. That will give us the location of the maximum deflection. So, ito. I-simplify ko lang, no? Para hindi mawala itong mga fraction-fraction. Ito, uh, 12.5x squared. Ito, 15x minus 2 uh, squared minus ito, uh, 7.5. 15 divided by 2. x minus 4 squared minus... 93.33. Okay. Ngayon, isosolve na natin tong x. So, pwedeng expand muna to, then distribute, distribute, then hanggang maging quadratic equation na lang siya, and then solve for x using quadratic formula or any other uh, methods. Pero, medyo tinatamad tayo ngayon. Try natin kung kaya ng shift solve. Okay? So, 12.5 x squared. Ayun, kaya pala. Yun, no? So, makikita natin that x, according sa calculator ko to, ha? x is equal to 3.0561 uh, Ayan, round off ko na lang into 4 decimal meters, okay? And kapag titignan natin yung ating beam, di ba? Napakalapit niya sa sentro. Di ba yun yung sinasabi ko nung una? Ang sentro, sentro natin is 3 meters, right? And yung nakuha natin na value ng x or the location of the maximum deflection is 3.05 or 3.06 Diyan lang, napakalapit niya dito sa sentro. Okay, so, ayun nga. Uh, if we are, kunwari, kunwari lang ha, if we are just doing some estimations of the deflection, we can simply assume that the maximum deflection will occur at the midspan. Kahit unsymmetrical yung ano niya. Uh, pero estimate lang yun na, it will not give you the same answer. Pero nga, that estimate will still be close. Uh, kasi nga, ulit, no, paulit-ulit talaga ako, no, yung x natin, no, yung uh, location niya would be very near dito sa ating midspan. Okay, so, uh, yan, share ko lang. <laughs> okay, so, ayan, continue na natin. Now, now that we know the location of our maximum deflection, uh, it is located when at x is equal to 3.05, we can use this uh, x value sa ating deflection equation and then we can finally solve for y, which is the maximum deflection. Okay. So, lagay ko lang dito na. Oops. Bakit yung ganyan? Ayan. So, ang mangyari lang dito mga bis, no? Wait. Oh, nag-ibang kulay yun, na. At x is equal to 3.0561 solve for y max. Okay? So, solve lang natin yan. Now, uh, 
how are we going to do that? Well, substitute lang pala, no? Sorry. So, ito, uh, y is equal to itong 25, anong x natin? 3.0561 uh, raised to 3 divided by 2 times 3 is 6. Ito, uh, 15. 15 over 3. x natin is 3.0561 minus 2 cube minus ito. 15, uh, 3.0561 minus 4 cube divided by three th 2 times 3 is 6 plus uh, C1x. Uh, C1 natin is, sorry, negative pala yan. Negative 93.33 times the x which is 3.0561. Yung C2 natin, ito mga b's is 0, di ba? So, no need to include. Yun, no, na-solve natin na 0. Okay. Okay, ngayon. Uh, yung EI natin, ilagay na natin sa baba, sa denominator. Para minsan na lang yung pag-input sa calculator. So, yung EI natin, yan, E natin is 200 gigapascal, I natin is 65 times 10 raised to 6 millimeter to the raised to the fourth power. So, 200 gigapascal. Tapos, yung I natin is, ano ulit yun? 65 times 10 raised to 6 millimeter raised to the fourth power. Now, before we can proceed at input sa calculator, we need to make sure that our uh, we need to make sure that our units are similar sa numerator at denominator. Take a look, no? Dito sa numerator natin, yung ginamit nating units dyan, di ba? Nanggaling ito sa pag-solve ng moments. Dito. Ang ginamit natin ng units is in kilonewton in, in terms of force and meters in terms of length. Okay, so dapat na ang uh, units din natin sa denominator ay in kilonewton at in meter. Okay? So, how are we going to do that? Let's uh, do quick conversions. Alam natin that 1 gigapascal giga is like, diba? 1 billion mega, 1 million. So, 9 zeros yan. 1, 2, 3. 1, 2, 3. Newton over meter squared. Kasi pascal is newton per meter squared, if you would remember. So, uh, however, kailangan tayo na naka-kilonewton. Naka so, to convert that, tanggal lang tayong tatlong zero. Bakit? Kasi, uh, 1 newton is 1,000 kilonewton. Ay, joke lang. 1 kilonewton is 1,000 newton. Yan. Medyo nababaliktad din yung utak ko eh. <laughs> Ayan. So, ibig sabihin, nang nagtanggal tayong tatlong zero, we have 1, 1 million kilonewton over meter squared is equal to 1 gigapascal. So, we can use this conversion dito. Kasi yung length naman natin, okay na yun, naka meter. So, lagay ko lang dito, uh, 1 or 10, 10 raised to 6, same rin lang naman. 10 raised to 6 kilonewton over meter squared is equal to 1 gigapascal. Para mag-cancel yung GPA, GPA dito. So, ito, okay na to. And then next, our I or the moment of inertia, naka-millimeter siya. Kailangan nga natin dyan i-convert into meter, di ba? So, how are we going to do that? Simple lang. Uh, 1 meter is uh, ilan? 1,000 mm. Tama ba? O, tama ta. So, ayan, raised to 4. So, magka-cancel yung meters. Meters, ni-raised to 4 ko siya kasi naka-raised to 4 yun. So, okay. Uh, Naka-meters lahat, naka-kilonewton. I-plug in lang natin sa calculator natin. And let us solve for the value of y or the maximum deflection. However, before we can solve for that, take a look here sa ating uh, numerator. Kung makikita natin itong term na to, 3 point something minus 4 is equal to a negative number. And remember, when x minus a is less than 0 or is negative, we canceled out. That is with reference to mga Kulay's method. So, tanggalin natin yan. Okay? Kasi negative. Ito, positive kasi. 3 minus 2 would be positive. So, ayan. Input lang natin to sa calculator natin and tignan natin. Okay? So, yung sagot natin mga bis would be equal to negative 0 0.013 Ito, in meters. Bakit in meters? Kasi naka-meters yung mga units natin dito. So, it should follow. Okay? Now, uh, our answer here is negative 0 0.013 or in millimeters, convert natin yan, let's move 3 decimal places, magiging 13.2458 uh, millimeters. Here, if you try to, like, to look at our answer, ayan, tama nga. Now, uh, I tried to input that our midspan 3, this x is equal to 3, okay? Diba kasi yung midspan? Kasi alam natin na napakalapit yan. And I came up with an answer very similar. Close na close. Ito rin mismo yung sagot ng ating why. So I'm wondering, no, this could be a good point of discussion. Uh, at all cases ba, eh, same din lang naman. So, ibig sabihin ba, useless din pala yung pagkuha natin ng location ng 
maximum deflection. So, could, uh, pwede bang sabihin na lang natin that kahit unsymmetrical yung simply supported beam natin, eh, mag a pa rin yung maximum deflection sa sentro? Well, uh, that's a good question. So, kindly comment down below what you think, mga bis, no? And, uh, ayan, it would be a good point of discussion. But for me, no? I think, I, I'm not sure if uh, this if this uh, method uh, sh- would be necessary already knowing the values here nang nilagay kong 3 na lang yung x natin eh parehas din lang naman so why should i do this no kasi very negligible eh negligible yung uh, difference nila ito nang sinolve ko to naging 13.26 uh, something which is ano which is higher pa dito eh dapat maximum deflection dapat ito yung mas pinakamataas eh why bakit nung nilagay ko na yung x squared 3 is mas mataas eh di ba yung na solve nga natin na max location is nasa 3.05 so i don't know <laughs> basta we know that the de- maximum of deflection is at this ano at this range nasa 13.3 ang hindi lang tayo certain is yung location niya uh, uh, tama ba okay so ayun i'm confused but yeah Please help me. Haha. <laughs> ayun. So, ayun nga, no? Finally, comment down below kapag may nanonood pa dito hanggang sa dulo. Magandang usapan to, no? Uh, I, I, I'm not sure with myself. Feeling ko, feeling ko lang, no? Feeling ko lang. Feeling ko lang pwedeng tama, pwedeng mali. Okay. So, that's it, mga bis. Uh, please like, share, and subscribe. Muli ako po yung bubuyog na nagpapala sa inyo. Magpapalasin yung 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 magpapalas